Amen. Thank you, music team. Well, friends, we're continuing today with our series on resurrection, and our focus today uh, will be on spiritual resurrection. What exactly is that? We'll, we'll study that together, and uh, I'd like to read this morning from 1 Peter, but before I do that, let me tell you a story of an amazing thing that, that happened to me this week. I went out, as promised, to do three interviews. I went out and, and interviewed Dusty Scovel, who is the executive director at Mission Granbury, and Mia Ruiz, who is the director at Roos Place OTS, one of our partners out there, and Margaret Kohenauer, executive director at the Paluxy River Children's Advocacy Center. And I don't know, maybe it's because we're in this series right now, and, uh, and I've been noticing these things, studying this text this week, but I noticed that all three told me beautiful stories of resurrection. They had to leave names and specifics out because of confidentiality concerns, but uh, Dusty told me the story of a man, uh, a veteran who lives here in Hood County, who was living on his own, right here in Granbury, in a mobile home. He'd lost his job. Utilities had been turned off, so he had no water and no power. His car had broken down, so he had no transportation. Uh, he had no cell phone. He was out of food. He was embarrassed to ask anyone for help. And fortunately, a neighbor noticed. A neighbor was paying attention and noticed his hurt and his need and called Mission Granbury, and little by little, they were, they were able to work together as community to help this man rebuild his life. Resurrection. Talking with Mia, Mia told the story of a child who was speech delayed and so didn't begin learning how to read and write until he was much older than average. And Mia recognized an opportunity because his mother had never learned to read or write either. And so Mia arranged for the two of them to learn together and to, to build this, this gift of reading and writing. Resurrection. Margaret showed me the rock garden there at the Children's Advocacy Center where children that have journeyed through the crucifixion of abuse and have emerged on the other side strong and hopeful have painted and placed their rock as a reminder of that strength and that hope. Resurrection. Resurrection, friends, is real. It is real, and it is happening right here in this community right now. And that is what I'd like to talk about today. So with that in mind, let's take a look together at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, and we'll read verses 3 through 9. And I have to pause before I do that and tell you that this is a meaty text. There's a lot going on here, and that's just kind of who Peter is. Uh, he reminds me of, of Faulkner with these complex sentence structures that sort of embody the complex interrelatedness of the concepts that he covers. I think the second sentence, as a matter of fact, actually contains nine, nine distinct themes, nine distinct concepts, uh, any one of which could be a sermon unto itself. So bear with me here, and, and let's read through this carefully and slowly, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we go. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor, when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. And together we say, thanks be to God. Okay, let's see if we can get down to the root of what's happening here. There's a lot happening here. Let's dig in together. Second part of verse 3 again. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the Greek word there for new birth is anageneo. Uh, it, it gets translated also as born again. And that's a, a theme that may be common in the New Testament, but you might find it surprising that the only time that that word, the literal version of born again, anageneo, appears in the text is right here, 1 Peter chapter 1. And the verse goes on to explain what that means doesn't mean that we're perfect now. The key is in the words living hope. We're given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is risen, because he stands triumphant over death, we know that suffering and death can never have the final word. That's the good news. And it's so earth-shakingly good that life with it is fundamentally, qualitatively different than life without it, to the point that you can't really say it's the same life. We have this life that's defined by its brokenness and its ugliness and its finiteness, and then suddenly, suddenly those four words come reverberating out of the tomb to the four corners of the earth, down through history like living water, so that you might hear them and know them to be true. He is not here. He has emerged from the tomb, offering a living hope. And to be born again is precisely to live in that hope, released from the finiteness and the finality and the futility of a life without hope, which is death, into, verse 4, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. That, friends, that is spiritual resurrection. And it doesn't mean that we feel good about all things all the time, but it means that we're learning day by day, to see all things through the lens of hope, this living hope. Now, there's another word that we're familiar with that's roughly synonymous with born again. Uh, it gets used a lot in Christian circles, and it's a beautiful, holy word that unfortunately, like some words, has taken on some baggage Maybe because many of us Christians have used it just a little bit pridefully. Look at me. I, unlike you, is the implication, am saved. Saved. Yes, yes, we are saved. We are because, again, to be born out of despair into living hope is salvation. But if we're proud of ourselves for that, and the irony is thicker than an N95 mask. Too soon? Too, no? Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. Because one of the main things that we're supposed to be born out of is pride, right? We're born out of pride into connectedness and living hope. And it's that pride that just might be the chief source of our despair. Friends, salvation was never supposed to be this pretty shiny rock that we keep in the display case under nice LED downlights for us and others to admire and take down occasionally to polish. That's not what salvation is. That's not what it's about. The rest of this passage paints a powerful picture of how we should think about this salvation that is the product of resurrection. And like the bodily resurrection that we talked about two weeks ago, there are sort of two aspects of this that we have to hold together in healthy tension. First, verses 4 and 5 say that this inheritance is, quote, being kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So yes, Salvation is something that you will know in its fullness 
in the fullness of time. Yes, it is secure, kept in the spiritual realm where the brokenness of the physical world can't touch it. Yes. And look down at verse 9. You rejoice because you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What is that? That's a present progressive word. You are receiving the salvation of your souls right now. Life is the process through which God works out your salvation. In other words, spiritual resurrection isn't just something that happens when you die. The journey of faith is the process of spiritual resurrection. God is trying to resurrect you right now. And by the way, on this Father's Day, that's what God as Father is all about. The fact that we have a God who is not just raining down power, but engaging in intimate relationship with us. The best answer I've heard to the question, are you saved, is yes, I am being saved. I am being saved by a God who goes with us and opens us moment by moment and day by day into living hope. It's also the answer to the question, why not just do whatever we want to in this life? Right? I've, I've been asked this many times. If, uh, if when we come to Christ and, and repent, we are going to be welcomed into the fullness uh, of, uh, of God's kingdom, why not just do whatever we want in this life and pray repentance on our deathbeds? And the answer is that salvation isn't just about the afterlife, right? It's about knowing and sharing in the fullness of God's shalom in this life. And because that's so, because that is so, perhaps the reminder that we need to hear today is that we have a critical role to play in that process. And we may not like it. See, we like to change others, don't we? In our image. If they, if they would just do things the way that we do things, all would be well with the world. We like to uh, scatter our seeds of, of critical wisdom on Facebook and Instagram. And sidebar, if you want to dwell, if you want to dwell in the abyss that is social media, be my guest. But uh, spoiler alert, you're not going to work out your salvation on there, and you're probably not going to work out anybody else's salvation on there either. If we want to co-labor to co-labor with God in the process of resurrecting us into living hope, we have to be willing to be changed. Wednesday morning at the men's prayer group, I heard uh, one of the best, most authentic, most meaningful personal testimonies that I've ever heard. Uh, our speaker told us the story of how a, a traumatic event in his life had caused him to take a step back and, and really take a hard look at himself and his life. And then he said something that I thought hit the nail on the head. He said, we have to be willing to hold up the mirror to ourselves, not just to reflect it on others, but to, to hold up the mirror to ourselves. And if you hear that, and your first thought is, yes, yes, Justin, that's right. You tell them, those people need to be willing to take a good hard look in the mirror. Mm, you might be missing the point if that's your first thought. We need to take a hard look at ourselves. A couple years ago, I asked one of my mentors in the ministry, if you could go back, uh, he was retiring, and I said, if you could go back and do it all over again, what, if anything, would you do differently? And he said, you know... He said, I would probably spend less time trying to be right and more time trying to be love. We need to ask ourselves in critical moments questions like, how might God be trying to use this moment to save me and to save others? Why am I doing this? How will this statement or this action introduce Christ-like love into the world? 
What does God need me to leave behind? How does God need me to be present? How will I feel about me in this moment when I look back upon my life? We need to hold that mirror up to ourselves. And the mirror, friends, the mirror is Jesus Christ. If you will look to his life, to his teachings as the model, and open yourself fully to being changed in his image, you will find, I promise, you will find that you are receiving right now the salvation of your soul. It's a process. It's a journey. Verse 6 in today's text tells us that it may be a painful journey sometimes. But we take up our cross and we follow Jesus up that long road of suffering to Golgotha and to the tomb beyond. And then an amazing thing happens. We find that the tomb isn't the end of the road. Standing in our tombs of pain and disappointment and anxiety and grief, we look out and we are amazed to see that the road continues through the tomb to something beyond. And it is then that we really know what it means to be saved. Amen.